And let's bring in anchor of the story, Martha McCallum is here. Martha, we've been watching every minute of this throughout the day. Uh, so far, your, your take on the first public accounting of that Afghanistan withdrawal, watching the top military brass. So, you know, obviously they're in a difficult position because all of these gentlemen, all of these top military advisors advised President Biden to leave 2,500 troops on the ground. Uh, they did not get their wish. And as you heard from General Milley, he said, you know, I'm not going to resign just because my advice isn't listened to. Giving advice is what I'm here to do. Uh, I thought it was very interesting. At one point he said, you know, my father didn't resign at Iwo Jima and those 13 servicemen did not resign at the Abbey Gate. Uh, so he stuck to uh, carrying out his mission as he sought. But on three very significant points, it's quite clear that all of this top military brass disagreed with President Biden and the things that he is on the record for having said. One, he said that he never, he didn't recall ever being told that he should leave 2,500 troops. He, sh he could have said in that moment, um, yes, that was advice that I was given, um, but that is not the, de what, the decision that I decided to make. He said, I don't recall anyone telling me that. He also said on the record that al-Qaeda was gone. We heard today from these individuals who are very close to the situation that they say al-Qaeda is not gone mm -hmm. and, in fact, uh, presents a growing threat. Um, they also took, I think, issue with the extraordinary success uh, definition by President Biden in saying that it was a logistical success and a strategic failure. Um, so there's a lot of daylight, I think, between these top military officials and President Biden as much as they tried to sort of carefully tread that ground. Including in this one exchange between Senator Tom Cotton and the Defense Secretary Austin on the input that these military leaders were giving the president. Listen. President Biden last month in an interview with George Stephanopoulos said that no military leader advised him to leave a small troop presence in Afghanistan. Is that true? I believe that, uh, well, first of all, I, I know the president to be an honest and forthright man. Is that true or not? Their input was... Uh, was received by the president and considered by the president uh, for sure. Obviously an exchange that stood out. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's a contradiction. They're saying we absolutely told him and he did listen to us. Uh, he heard what we had to say. Um, so, you know, the, the thing is that there's, there's consequences to that decision, to not leaving people in. We now haven't gotten as many as 4,000 um, Americans and SIVs out of the country. We now have an accelerated threat from terrorist groups, including al-Qaeda and ISIS-K in Afghanistan, that they had argued could be contained or managed to a greater extent if we left 2,500 troops on the ground. So the consequences are ever-changing and moving. Just because you decide you're going to leave on a certain date, and it was also interesting, General Milley said, I was always taught uh, and, and, you know, raised to believe as a military man for 42 plus years that you never set a date certain. So there, there's a lot of controversy, a lot of dissension between these top military advisors and President Biden. And President Biden, you know, owns those decisions um, and can stand up for them. But what we learned today in, in more sharp clarity, I think, is just how deep those divisions were. You talk about the consequences. Here's uh, Chairman Milley doing just that, saying that the enemy controls Kabul. Watch. Outcomes like this are not determined in, you know, yeah. the last five days, the last 20 days, or the last year, for that matter. Uh, outcomes in a war like this, uh, an outcome that is a strategic failure, the enemy is in charge in Kabul. And that we know today, Martha, right? Yeah. Strategic failure. The enemy is in charge in Kabul. And we watched all of that play out with such great frustration. I thought it was interesting. I think it was Tommy Tuberville, the senator, mm -hmm. uh, who said, you, you know, can, can the United States military defeat any force on the face of the earth, essentially? And it, it, the answer was yes. Um, so that puts you in a situation where you're saying we had an option to not leave the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan. Uh, had we potentially brought in more troops or had we potentially secured, uh, maintained our presence at, uh, at the airport at Bagram Air Base. Uh, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, obvious questions mm -hmm. that you can go back and look at. But the, the bottom line is, and I think most Americans feel this way, that if we wanted to, we could have defeated the Taliban. Um, but there have been decisions all on the way. And, and I think they're right when they say this is 20 years and several presidencies, four presidencies of decisions that have gone into where we are today. Lots of um, notes, too, from the, um, the, the members of Congress there talking about where we stand on the world stage as a result of this yeah. botched withdrawal. The Joint Cha uh, Chiefs Chairman said uh, that because of this withdrawal, uh, we have damaged our credibility here for America. Um, as we await this to continue, Martha, you're going to stand by with us. Thank you.